Hi everyone, um, my name is Meredith Luce and I'm an artist living in North Grenville, Ontario. And I wanted to share with you today my process for making lino cut prints. I've been working on a new series of pieces in a variety of mediums. Um, it's uh, titled The Quilted Forest and it focuses on uh, forest floor and close to the forest floor, uh, things that I find on hikes uh, in the region, in provincial parks, and also in um, conservation areas and protective forest areas around the region. So the piece I'm working on right now is part of a group of lino cut prints uh, as part of the series. And this one is of some, um, what I'm pretty sure are a bracket fungus. So here's the photograph I took. And this particular piece I decided to put uh, in the Lino Cut series because I really like uh, the amount of light and dark contrast in the texture that's created from this subject. When you step back from it, it creates a really interesting pattern. And I really love how Lino Cut sort of connects to textile design and um, wallpaper design and sort of pattern uh, pattern based art forms like that. So generally what I do creating a lino cut, I always work from my own photograph because I, I build my lino cut illustration uh, directly off the photograph. So it's really important to me that every aspect of the work is my own, um, not only from a intellectual property point of view, but uh, just for my own sense of creative integrity. So what I do is I'll, I'll take an image. Um, sometimes I'll work directly off my computer screen with a piece of tracing paper. Uh, though it's a little bit tricky if you're doing a, a more complex subject because you end up having to hold your paper up against the uh, the face of the computer, which is kind of tricky. You can use a light table uh, if you have a light table. I find it's easy enough just to use um, a piece of tracing paper uh, and your photograph as long as you have a nice bright light to work under. So I place the tracing paper over my image and I try and find uh, the part of the photo that I feel will will be the most dynamic as a composition. So in this case, uh, I placed it approximately here. I'll move this down so you can see. So I'm getting uh, not only my subject in the foreground, but I'm able to create a little bit of depth and a little bit of a sense of place by having some of these background branches from another uh, tree or shrub that's in the background here. Uh, and that allows me a little space as well if I decide to do watercolor backgrounds or things like that on the Lano Cut prints uh, to have a space for some uh, areas of, of color washes. It also helps to create some contrast because I have this sort of light uh, light area in the background. Things that are farther away should appear a bit lighter when you're trying to build depth. So having that light background is going to be helpful, I think, in this composition. Um, it's also giving me a nice angle, um, an angle here as well. So to have some sort of irregular, irregular shapes in my composition. So typically I'll place the, uh, the paper over top and See if I can find a pencil nearby. This is just a mechanical one I happen to have. But any uh, any pencil with a slightly soft lead, so just a standard HB pencil works great for this. Um, and then I block in um, I block in the shapes. Uh, usually I'll start with just some general outlines of uh, the really important shapes within my composition. So making sure I get the contours of the subject that I want. But then the nice thing is I can um, stray from the photograph underneath because I'm now creating a new composition that's going to translate very differently when it's just in a uh, one color block print. So I'll I'll trace the shapes and then what I start to do rather than just um, drawing in every detail of the bark I've decided uh, in this piece I'll just put it over the white paper so you can see it a bit better here but rather than draw all the the details of the bark there's you can see in the photo there's um, some lichen and some moss and some of the areas of the bark. I'm not going to include those uh, because my focus here is this particular um, fungus that's that's growing on the tree. So I want to make sure that the shapes and lines and essentially the texture of of my focal subject is going to contrast from the background that it's sitting on. So I, here I've, I've uh, chosen to do these contour lines to help show the the shape and the the sort of waviness of the contour of the um, of the fungus and then for the tree bark I'm doing lines that are very straight and in a perpendicular direction so it really helps the 
um, the subject to, to pop out more. I've kept the background completely white, uh, again, for contrast, and then um, these branches that I've just blocked in as solid lines. So when you're drawing in the shapes, um, it doesn't have to be perfectly colored in. You just want to make sure that the, the whole area that you're going to leave to be inked uh, is well shaded so that it transfers onto the block. So with a, a lino cut print, um, you're carving away all of the areas that you don't want to get ink on on your block. So there, you're carving away the negative spaces of your image. Um, so anything that you would like to appear uh, in ink when you print your uh, your lino cut print uh, should have pencil on that area. So as long as you've colored it in, again, it doesn't have to be done nicely. You just want it to be um, dark enough that it'll transfer onto the block. This, um, because I've already transferred this image, you can see here, uh, the pencil lines are a little bit lighter on my tracing paper because I've actually rubbed some of that graphite off onto the block. So once it's all colored in, um, I can show you on the back of this block how it works. So you create your image. Now what you're creating is the image as it's going to appear as a print. So it's facing the right direction. When you flip it onto your block, you're going to be carving your image in reverse of how it's going to appear. Um, this is important to keep in mind if you incorporate any um, any words into your uh, into your print because obviously if you just write them and carve them directly on your block when you go to print them they'll be backwards so it's important that you put them onto a piece of tracing paper or if um, if you're able to to actually write them backwards on the block so you flip your tracing paper over and line it up with your block and with lino cut printing I've found that it's helpful to try and stay open-minded and not be too precious about um, the exact details of the image as they appear on the block because when they get transferred as you'll see I just place it down I try and hold it in place as best I can you don't want to slide it around because it'll blur the image I'll just do part of it here because I don't actually need it on this side so you rub with your thumb you can use a spoon um, to transfer it sometimes just pressing hard and kind of wiping it is enough and when you remove your tracing paper you'll see that the um, the pencil has now transferred onto the linoleum block. So um, when I talked about not being too precious, you can see I've lost some of the details uh, in some of these areas. Obviously here it didn't transfer at all because I didn't uh, rub the paper there. So you need to make sure that you're trusting your instinct as well. And once you get started with the carving, I find if you start with the areas where it's really clear uh, where you intended to go, um, that helps you build your confidence. And then as you carve, uh, you can start to just interpret more based on um, what you feel is going to work well in the composition. So you can refer back to your tracing paper drawing as well. It helps to have it over a light colored uh, piece of paper. Uh, often I'll just take my photo and flip it over. Or you can keep your photo nearby if you want to use that as your reference. But I do find it helpful because you're working more in abstract shape and line work um, to keep your um, your original tracing paper drawing handy. So we've now transformed our, our image from uh, taking the photograph um, on location, creating a sort of abstracted illustration uh, based on the, the sort of shapes and proportions and uh, areas of contrast from that photograph, transferring it onto the block, and now you're further abstracting that, um, that image because um, you're now interpreting from the block that you're carving on. So this is the the good side. You just have to watch. You don't have anything precious underneath because that graphite will uh, rub off onto other things. Um, so what I often do, I'm working with um, a speedball carving tool. You can buy this as part of a, a lino cut printing beginner set. Um, it's a really fun medium to work in. It doesn't matter your um, artistic experience. Um, you can really do some fun, interesting things with this and you can buy printing inks that work on fabrics. Uh, as well as on paper. So even if you want just as a fun project uh, with your kids um, or with a friend to create some blocks and then you can, you know, design your own textiles if you have some, you know, bed sheets that you want to print with a cool design or um, some tote bags that you want to refresh. Um, it's a really fun, uh, fun medium to work in. So the speedball tool comes with all these different nibs for carving. Um, I, I tend to mostly use the curved and the sort of U-shaped and V-shaped tools. Um, the wider the opening, the more 
uh, linoleum it's going to take out when you go to carve. So um, if you're new to lino cut, I recommend starting with a smaller nib just so you don't accidentally like take out a huge chunk where you don't mean to and just get used to how the tool works. You can also just practice on the back of your block. It's not going to affect um, your use of the other side. In fact, sometimes I even use a block um, like I put different images on the front and the back just to get the most use out of it. If you're doing that, you have to make sure you don't carve too deeply because as you can see, it's not it's not a very deep um, piece of linoleum. That's also a, an issue if you end up mounting it on wood to put it through um, a proper printing press. I always print by hand. Just grab my tool to show you here. I print by hand using um, a baron that I just I use to just rub the paper to tr to um, make sure the ink transfers. I don't have a printing press yet, but maybe one day. Um, so those are just some tips to get started. I find with a, a block, even this size, sometimes it feels like you're making very slow progress. Sometimes it's nice to start with a slightly bigger nib just to take care of these big areas. So I'm not going to chart. Um, I'm not going to complete the whole block today uh, uh, for this video. I just want to show you a bit of how I approach things and just explain the the printmaking process for anyone who's um, curious. So I'll start here. You need to carve away on the edges as well if you don't want your uh, block to have a border around the outside. Sometimes a border looks nice. Uh, again, don't get too hung up over it being like a crisp, super straight, super square line, unless you have a very steady hand uh, or you're measuring it with a ruler or something. Um, I just, I don't like to work that way. I like things to be a little more freeform. But I'm going to start here. And when you're carving, as I'm about to show you the bad way to do it, um, you want to carve. You want to push the tool away from your body and away from your hand. So you don't want to hold it like this and press this way to carve because if it slips, um, these are quite sharp and they can um, give you a pretty good cut. So you want to be careful to push it away from you. I wouldn't recommend this for really little kids. Um, you know, kids who are maybe like 9, 10, um, this is probably okay with supervision, but um, you know, you'll want to gauge it based on the maturity of the child you're doing the activity with and make sure that they're able to understand um, the instructions and the importance of carving away. If you do want to do this activity with kids, um, I really recommend using uh, styrofoam trays instead because then um, you can work with a, a pencil and just make, um, you can just make divots this way. This isn't um, the same because here you're carving the positive space, you're carving away the actual image. So the ink is going to go around um, and the ink will fill the negative spaces. So it's not quite the same printing process, but it's great if you want to do this activity of a kid of any age, even, you know, a kid who's like 18 months old or two years old. Um, this is very safe for them to do. Just give them a, um, a pencil and, uh, and uh, a styrofoam tray. You can get these from obviously like veggies, mushrooms, that you buy um, meat trays. If you're using meat trays, make sure you really clean them thoroughly so you don't have any bacteria. Um, and then you can use um, finger paints or acrylic paints to ink them and print with them, kind of like a stamp pad. So that's just an alternative for, um, just for safety, working with little kids. So we'll get carving. So I start, um, when I'm working near the edge, I find it easier to start at the edge and come in. Um, sometimes I'm cautious about like here, I'm approaching um, this little intersection of this branch. If you don't have as much experience with carving, um, you may want to carve away from some of those important visual areas um, so you don't accidentally carve over top of it. Um, but just to show you how you can save that, let's say I am carving here and, uh oh, I cut into this branch that I drew. Um, when I mentioned before about not being too precious about um, about the work, you can simply correct this by deciding, okay, I'm going to just move this branch over. I know I still want a branch here as part of my composition. I'll just move over here and I've just moved my branch. So now hopefully you can see, so I've just moved it. So now there's a little branch here instead of where I accidentally cut it off. So be flexible, um, have fun. Remember that it's, um, it's important when you're making art to have a sense of playfulness. Um, although it is, it's a fun challenge to apply all of the different elements and principles of art and design. Um, it's good to trust your instincts as well. So here I'm 
Again, I'm carving away from my body. And this is, I'm using a really big um, U-shaped tool because I want to try and um, just take away a lot of this excess fairly quickly. You'll see in a minute when I use the small tool, um, it would take forever to carve this. And then you have a lot of little lines and there's more risk that you're going to be printing a lot of um, excess texture in the background that you, you may not want to have there because it could distract from your subject. So I'll hold it up on the side. You can see I haven't... Um, I haven't carved in all that deeply here. You don't have to gouge all the way through. You just want enough that you're creating a relief in the surface, like an indentation in the surface. And then um, when you go to print your block, if there are areas that are too shallow, you'll know because you'll start these lines that are in here created by your tool, um, they will appear with a little ink on them from uh, on your paper. And you can just correct that either by going back after your test print and um, after washing the ink off, trimming some of these little um, little bits to make sure that they're short enough. The other thing you can do is not push as hard when you apply your ink to make sure it's not um, getting into those spots or putting less ink on your, um, on your brayer. Mine is disgusting and covered in acrylic paint right now, but... Um, so not putting quite as much ink when you roll on and not pushing so hard that it goes into the spots as well as when you transfer the image to the paper, not like pushing super hard with your fingers or with your, um, with your Baron, um, just, just working lightly and steadily, um, will help to make sure you don't pick up those areas as well. And of course, if you have a proper printing press, um, you can adjust the, you know, height or pressure of your press to make sure that you're getting prints that look great. So uh, so anyway, I'll start, I start with these bigger areas. It just gives me a sense that I'm actually getting somewhere in my carving. Um, when you have a really intricate block design, again, it can feel kind of tedious. I try to work, when I'm carving a negative space, I try to at least work in a relatively uniform direction so that if some of these lines do appear, it doesn't look too chaotic um, and distracting. So here I'm getting an uneven edge along this branch. That's okay. I'm going to go back with a smaller tool later and um, clean up those edges. Right now I'm just trying to get rid of the bulk of this. So we'll assume I've carved all that out. I'll switch to a smaller tool. You can keep the tools stored in the, um, in the handle, but I sometimes like to have them out just to remind myself that I have them available. So I'm picking the next to smallest one. I find the tiniest one, I don't tend to use it very much unless I'm doing sort of hairline texture details, uh, though it is handy for working on a smaller block for getting um, like crisp points on your lines. Um, make sure that's tightened. So I'm going to go back to this branch that I started on and to clean up this uneven edge, I'm going to put the tool right in where my pencil ends there. And the other thing I'm gonna do now that I'm going along the edge of this um, element in the illustration, I'm gonna make sure that when I'm carving, I'm following the contour of the subject as best I can. You can move your arm and your hand around. You may find it helpful to just slide the block while you work as well. Um, I find it's helpful to follow the contour of the, the element because it helps to make sure that that, that element really pops out if you have lots of little marks in different directions around it, it's not going to have that nice sort of flowing um, shape to it. So I'm going to work around the outside. I'm catching all the little bits that I didn't the first time around. And you can see this tool is going um, a bit deeper. The other one I didn't push too deep because I didn't want to um, gouge out too much of the linoleum, linoleum initially. So I'm going along the trunk following the contour of these branches. And I'm not going all the way around because again, I don't want to come into that um, junction of the branches and accidentally chop that branch off. So I'm going to come back out away from it while I work. And keep in mind, although it may look like this branch is quite chunky with the outline there, the only part that's taking the ink is this the little area of pencil that I've left behind. And you don't have to worry about the pencil when you're transferring the image. Um, the ink is going to cover that up and it shouldn't affect the clarity of your 
your image, but it's good to do a few test prints anyway, and that'll sort of clean that off. And I'm going to go in here to my um, corrected branch that I did as an example and tidy up this little juncture where it meets the main part of the branch. There we go. And you can see, you know, if there's some areas here where it's a little bit, um, the other linoleum is sticking up, I might just make a more of a gradation to where the bigger area is carved out just to make sure I don't get extra edges in there. Um, part of the beauty though of block printing is some of those little lines and bits and pieces that get left behind when those come out on the print depending on the printmaker some people like a really crisp print I kind of like those um, those little pieces that um, that end up showing up because it um, it makes it a little more obvious that it's a block print and I think it's part of what makes each print print unique as well because sometimes they pick up on some of the prints you do, but maybe not others, depending on the pressure you're applying, especially when you're hand printing, because it's much less um, mechanical and uniform when you're doing it by hand. And lino cuts are great for making things like cards. Um, I know a lot of people are enjoying snail mail during the pandemic, because it's kind of a nice way to uh, feel like you're doing something personal and special for someone, even if you can't visit them. So I'm a I'm a fan of snail mail, but um, again, these are great for printing cards. You can get different colors of inks. You can get uh, metallic inks, glow in the dark inks, all kinds of stuff. You can even ink your block with multiple colors. If when you lay them out in your tray, you lay the colors out side by side in your tray and then uh, roll to kind of blend in the center. You can get a gradient uh, on your print. You can do, like I said, backgrounds where you paint a background on the paper first and then um, Print your block. You can also use the back of the block if it's still solid. Um, you can ink that as a solid color background on the paper in one color and then print um, print your main image in another color. So there's lots of neat things you can do. So this just gives you an idea of um, how I work with my printing. Here I'm doing this sort of complex silhouette of the um, the fungi on the tree, fungi, fungi, fungi. It's apparently not agreed upon how to say that, so I never know which one is going to work best. Here we go. Okay, so I've created this contoured silhouette um, here that you can see. Again, using a small, um, I'm using the second smallest tool um, in terms of how tight that, that opening is on the V of the, trying to get this in focus for you guys. Thanks for your patience. I'm still new to making videos, so learning as I go. Um, but yeah, start, you know, start with the bigger areas, start with, um, some of the kind of more obvious outlines in your piece. As you get more confident, you can get into doing the, um, the texture areas, follow your instincts, have fun, and, uh, hopefully, um, you'll get a chance to make some new um, new kinds of art than what you've maybe tried before. And I should mention these um, Speedwell blocks. I'll just show them real quick. So if you're looking at them in a store, your favorite local art store, because it's great to support um, local businesses, um, you can get a Speedball. This is called the Speedy Carve Carving Block. They, uh, they come in pink. Um, I find this is the best for durability long term. Um, they have speedy cut, which is um, a slightly like a slightly cheaper material. Um, it's very buttery and easy to carve. However, I find it doesn't stand up as well over time. So it's great, you know, if you're just doing it for fun to make some holiday cards or um, just to learn on. These are fine, but over time, I find that they um, they tend to crack a bit. Um, compared to the the pink ones, tend to last a little bit uh, a little bit better if you're doing a lot more print making. Um, you can get also uh, sort of a hard linoleum that's more of a professional grade. Some that are mounted on wood blocks already. Um, so it really depends. But I would say start with one of these two because um, it's a great a great place to start. They come in all different sizes. I've been buying 
these six inch by 12 inch ones uh, just because it gives me the option if I want to do a bigger piece or kind of an unusual um, aspect ratio I can do that in this case I've cut them down into uh, four by six blocks for this particular series because I'm going to do about nine of these um, small ones as uh, the lino cut component of my uh, my series I'm working on so I hope that helps and good luck and feel free to comment if you have um, questions and I'll try to answer them or direct you to a resource that I think uh, might have a little more information. Thanks for watching. Bye.